Hey guys, welcome to Twins Day, the weekly Q&A series where you get the twin take on all things family, money, and love related. This is a weekly Q&A series where we're going to be answering three questions, one from each of those categories, sent in from you, the Team Twitter team. Absolutely. So if you have a question about one of the three topics we're going to be talking about, family, everybody got a family. I mean, sometimes I wish I didn't. No shade, no tea. Dumb. Um, definitely. <laughs> but, oh, <yeah. laughs> Guys, <laughs> money, everybody need it. Yeah, you I'm going to co-sign on that one. You're right. And then love, because like we all need love in our lives, and we come from two very different places uh, on our journey, you know, I'm in like love. To, right? I like to think I'm less scorned in 2021. Good. So we'll that, see. Now, that is growth. <laughs> Whoa, you know. But if you have a question, you can email it to us. That's us saying you get in the description box because that's where the email address is found. Yes. We need to hear your questions. Okay. Yeah. And we want to answer it here on Twins Day. So let's hop right into it. Amber, what is the first question? All right. I'm Ooh. glad you asked. Okay, Grandmama. Did she do that? Okay. So, guys, we're going to kick it off with the family question sent in by Anonymous because if you don't want us to tell your business, exactly. we will not tell. Yeah. That's your business. Yeah, honestly, specifically tell us if you do want us to say who it is because otherwise we're always going to say it's Anonymous. I want to know. No. I want to know your name, your name, your name. Why well, you got to be Anonymous? We're done here, so. Okay. Um. Comes in. Hey, twins. <laughs> <laughs> How would you deal with not being close to a sibling as an adult? Oh, wow. So I guess, I mean, that's all they gave us. They didn't give us much. So I'm assuming maybe they grew apart. Maybe they were never close, but they're adults, siblings, and they're not close. So how would you deal since we are siblings and adults? Yeah. So, But we're close both in proximity and I would say relationship wise, not really out of want, just more out of necessity, like pure but, happenstance. So, you know, a question I would have is like, how old, what's the age difference? Because uh, clearly not everybody is twins, right? right? So you have to assume that there is some sort of age difference. And I would say maybe the larger that age difference, the bigger a gap there was growing up. But now that you're adults, I feel like that gap tends Trips. to close. Yeah, it should close because you get to a shared point, uh, you know, in your experience in adulthood. But my advice, or my question really is, do you want to be close? Mm. Because my advice would just be to make it plain. There's no room for pride. There's no room for, you know, your ego. And especially- She says these things like they're easy, like pride and ego, like just put those to the side, like bruh. But my whole thing, if 2020 taught us anything, is that life is not promised. Mm. And these little petty arguments that people get into and don't speak to each other for months and years, it's not worth it. I agree with that. So if you are the one that was wrong or even not, you just got to get over yourself and just say, Hey, I want to be closer as a sibling. Like as long as you just go heart in hand and be sincere, it's then up to the other person. And hopefully they will see the value in the relationship and do the same thing. But if not, at least you did everything you could. I like that answer. Yeah. See, guys, like, we agree about a lot of things, but then y'all gonna see, like, it There's goes left fast. You don't. You're right. But I do agree. It starts with, do you want to rectify the situation, which you might so because you wrote in. So, with that being said, gosh, I just hate when my advice just is so similar to hers, but pride to the side, sincere heart. So what I've learned, if anything, as a life coach is when you talk to someone, most people listen to someone only for them to be quiet so then they can start talking. And so go to the, I would approach the conversation with open ears and being receptive to whatever your sibling has to say as far as their feedback is concerned on why you guys might have had an issue or might not be close altogether and you're looking to kind of rekindle their relationship truly listen to what they're saying without taking it personal or without applying that to any part of your life and just let them have their feelings and then in turn that will create a better environment for you to have your feelings and be able to just put it out there on the table and you're not talking to your sibling to try to convince them to feel a type of way or to make them feel bad you're simply expressing how you feel about the matter and you want them to do the same so how you come to the conversation 
matters as well. However, they decide to receive it, you move on, you move from there. But don't feel obligated to have someone in your life, even if they are your sibling, if you aren't getting from them what you need in return or if the environment's toxic. Yeah, exactly. Like if it if it brings drama and it, it makes you feel bad to have this person in your life, sorry, but you don't need it. It's, you know, even if they are your sibling, but you gotta take care of yourself first. And one thing that I would say that really helps is that if both people go into it knowing for a fact that the result that they want to get is a reconciled relationship. Mm, because when you go in knowing that, okay, no matter what this person says and, and how it might hurt my feelings, I know that they're saying it but because they want us to be able to work this out, not telling me a reason why they can't. Because I think the biggest problem is the, well, if that's how you really feel, then we don't need to do And it's just like, no. If you come from a place where no matter what happens, we want to reconcile this relationship, then like my sister said, that creates the space to listen and to be heard. And then once you get to that level of communication, you can't really allow risks to grow anymore. There's just no room for it with the, the transparency that you'll have with each other. It takes a hella emotional mature person, emotionally mature, yeah, emotional. it takes a hella emotionally mature person to approach a conversation not seeking to be right or wrong, not seeking to be right and not seeking to make the other person feel wrong, mm. but just to share how you're actually feeling. So mm -hmm. keep that energy and think about how you would want your feedback to be received and try to give the other person that respect. Yeah, but once again, it's not on you. If it's they're not coming with the right heart, if they're not coming with the, the wanting to, to reconcile, then you just gotta say, you know what? I tried and then you gotta go on. All family ain't blood, and all blood ain't family. Deep. I, that just hit me. <laughs> well, while I'm sitting all here family, next to my blood. It is blood, but I get what you're saying. Barely. Exactly. Okay, what is that money question? So, coming in, we got the question, Hey, Amber and Autumn, what is your ideal emergency fund situation? That's a great question. First of all, to have one. I mean, whew, because, baby... I didn't like to see a few dollars sitting in my account. I'm like, what? A hundred dollars? There has to be something for 97 that I could buy. Like, <laughs> I still wouldn't be like in the negative because, no. whoo, saving money. It's not everyone's calling, you know? That's not everyone's ministry. That's your ministry. You're right. I, I was mean, like, when I said not everyone's, I was referring to you. I'm actually yeah. very good at it. So I would say, I think it's Dave Ramsey who says at least a thousand dollars. I think it's a thousand. See, there you go. So at minimum, I say it's a thousand dollars. That is my car broke down. Something, you know, like I got a crazy, uh, you know, I heat and air I bill. Flat. Something, yeah, like something happens. A thousand dollars you should just have on hand in cash. But to me, if I'm talking like real life emergency, and I guess it wouldn't be an emergency fund uh, so much as a savings account. I'm going three to six months worth of expenses. Woo! You know, like. How many of y'all even know how much your monthly expenses are? Like, Hello, I that's mean, a word. Questions that need answers because I just started getting my eyes around. Okay, this is about how much all of my bills cost. It costs me to live each month this amount. Okay, now I can times that by three. I need how much? Exactly. Now that is a scary amount of money to just see sitting in the bank. You're just like, there's got to be a trip I can go on. Mm. There's got to be something that needs to be happening with this money. But no, no, no. I'm telling you, a rainy day will come. An emergency will pop up. Mm. It's like insurance. It's like you don't see the need for it until right when you need it. Lord, and we thank you for insurance. Yes, you're so glad it's there. So at bare minimum, a thousand dollars. And you know, that's a short term savings goal. Yeah. It's like, just put an extra, you know, $50 every paycheck. That's a hundred dollars a month probably. And that's 10 months. That's less than a year to just have that much. But I'm going to say, have a regular savings regimen, no matter what, and then get to that three to six month worth of income or in expenses. You hear about paying yourself first, and you think, oh no, like what does that even mean? But the value in taking money before you do anything else with it and putting it in the bank for you, for the rainy day fund, for your um, initial thousand dollar buffer is super critical. And I learned the value in when I find that when I do pay myself first, I have more money. I don't know, obviously I have more money in my account, but I just feel like 
if I put that $50 in my bank account, then I might need it for something else, but I end up not needing it and still being able to see my account grow as well. So that's a plus for sure. And if anything 2020 taught us was like emergencies, they gone, 2020 is gone 2020. And that's 2020 what it did. It was an emergency. A whole like literal emergency. And so it's, it's just a different level of discipline, discipline that you have to have, but you know, discipline is so annoying and you're like, oh, life would be so much easier if I could just do what I wanted when I wanted it and not have to think about the future and not have to think about what's actually best for me and just do what's best right now, you know? But it's just a different level of discipline that really, literally and figuratively pays off in the long run. I mean, she's right. I was like, where's the line? Don't be mad. Where's the line? And we weren't really taught about financial responsibility. So learning these habits as an adult, it's even more difficult to adapt and break them into my real life. But I will say it feels good having some money in the bank in case something happens. I mean, I'm working on building that stockpile up, but it feels good that I'm okay with letting it sit there in the growth because there once was a day where that wasn't the case. So if you're new to saving period, welcome. I know, exactly. You're not in a bad place to be and you can start right now. Yeah, you can start anytime. It's never too late. Oh, I, ha I haven't been doing it for the past decade. Well, guess what? Today is today. It's a new day. Literal day one and because you need it. I'm just, I can't stress. There's never a time where you're, that's never going to come up and you're not going to need it. When that time comes, when like you're 70. Mm. And when you're 70 and you got that money, spend away. Right? You know, party time. But up until then, making it rain. Yes, in your 70s. But until then, keep that money there. Pay yourself first. Man, hashtag pay yourself first. That was me dropping the mic. I love it. That was great. Who do you know that needs to hear this twin talk? Hello, and to save their money. I like, mean, share this video if you feel in the content because, baby, I know I'm learning something and I'm just sitting here. Hello? Oh my gosh. No? No. My personal favorite time of the day. Why? Let's talk about love. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I feel like this is where we would have the most chance of like having different points of view on stuff. So I'm just excited <sighs> to see how we can help somebody. All right, guys, reading, hey twins, do you think guys really know you're the one that soon after meeting you? Or I guess, when do you think guys know you're the one after they meet you? My short answer, yes. Like, they do, I feel like they do know. Well, I take that back. It's not that they know you're the one, but I feel like they immediately know when you're not the one. Mm. Like, I feel like they immediately know where this ain't it. I don't know if they know this is it, but I feel like people can tell like immediately when this ain't it. But unfortunately, like the that doesn't stop them from actually talking to you. I was gonna say, like the the gracious thing to do would just be to cut it off and be like, this ain't it. But no, nah, they just keep stringing you along and they just keep the company around because you there. So I do think that for some guys it can be immediate like it can just be the i knew she was the one immediately when did your husband allege he knew you were the one literally immediately <clears throat> literally the night we met he went home and told his mother that he found his forever girl that's what he he literally called me that no Trust comment. me, that night I did not go home <laughs> and tell my mother that I found my forever guy, you know? So I, it, it doesn't have to be immediate. Like you don't have to be able to immediately tell in order for it to grow and happen. But I do feel like if they don't know that you are the one, they certainly know that you're not the one. But like, if we're being honest, don't you know that they're not the one either? Like... And don't you just keep going back because they keep coming back and you're just like, well, something's better than nothing. Can we be honest on today? Whose story is she telling? I'm just saying. I know there was a few of my stories. I ain't gonna lie. Lord help us. Lord help us. From the knowledge I've acquired over the years of my research in love and dating, I feel like men do know if you're the one very early on in the relationship getting to know courting process mm -hmm. nine times out of ten you're not because love is rare it's and a gift, bro. it's a miracle love is literally a miracle so and eight out of ten people who are married like don't even belong 
with each other. They've just done done some form of what Autumn described and stayed around to stay around to stay around. Then they got kids together. Then they done got a lease together. And then they just done been together for four years. So, and the woman's pressuring the man and he goes, might as well, but he really don't want to marry her. Or the woman gets married because she wants security for all the wrong reasons, basically. Ouch. But men do know when you're the one. And, or they know, yeah, like you said, that you're not the one. So, so in my opinion, you know, you can't, leave it uh, you can't let it be like well this guy has to decide whether or not i'm the one like you know for yourself how you feel about the the relationship and then if you are feeling like that person could be the one then that's when you need to get on the same page about how you feel but yes. you don't need to know if they think you're the one if you don't even know if they're the one ladies and that's why you have to have standards you have to determine what you want before you go into a relationship so when that person does or does not meet those expectations you can move accordingly because if you're trying to figure it out while you're with someone you're way more likely to compromise yourself and your true deep down ones mm -hmm. for what you can see right in front of you then you stuck you're just stuck lord that's not what we want mm -mm. so we both are we agree with that we agree with yeah. each other on this one too yeah you're welcome everyone <laughs> look it can work no but really just you know here's all i'm going to say if you've been with a man or you've been talking to a man for any more than like two to three months and they still can't say for certain whether or not they actually want to be in a relationship or whether or not they really want to at least commit, then no, you're not the one. You're okay? not the one. Because a man will at least go to that step by that many times, you know? They're not saying that, you know, not saying that they're going to marry you, but if they're just like, oh, if y'all been talking for three months and he ain't made you his girl, you're not the one. You're not the one. Sorry to break it to you. There's not that much time in the world. At least he will be able to make the commitment that he wants to secure the bag with you right now until he figures it out. Y'all get to know each other more. But if he's not even willing to make the commitment that you guys are in something exclusive, I think the three-month mark is a great amount of time to know. Then do yourself a favor, sis. Yeah. Get out. Get out. You're welcome. Big facts. No cap. I know. Oh, my God. Comment down below. Do you know what no cap means? Because <laughs> for real. I know some of y'all know what no cap means. I, I heard no. I know some of you do not know what no <laughs> cap means. And trust, you are not alone, right? Mm. Okay, well, that was amazing. I Hopefully, know, right? we told you some information that you could use in your everyday life. And maybe we told you something that, like, you know somebody else can Come use. Come on now. So why don't you go ahead and like and share this video? with someone that might need some of uh, the nuggets that we dropped. If today. you are not subscribed, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you be? I know, you, right? Do you want to risk missing out on this weekly Q&A time together? I know you don't, so please hit the subscribe button. We'd greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That bing, way, bing, 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 whenever bing. we post a video or go live, you get notified. We'd love you for it. Also, what are your takes on the questions that we got today? I thought they were really good. They were. So, like, have you been in a sibling situation that, you know, maybe you have been estranged for a long time and you came back together? Like, how did that go? Yep. What uh, about your money situation? Do you have an emergency fund? Mm. Are you thinking about starting one after watching this video? We need the deets on the finances. Also, do you believe and love at first sight or that you will know the one as soon as you see them do you have a story like that let us know in the comments how's it going for you on there in the comments read i'm meddling I, I know but also don't forget if you have a question or you have a comment something you want to talk to us about on a more private level you can email us and we would love to have your question here on hashtag twinsday so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week bye, bye.